Okay, this will be chair flying a couple different approaches. We're gonna chair fly the VOR Alpha into Oceanside Airport and then the ILS uh, 28 right into Montgomery uh, Airport. So let's imagine that we've taken off, we're flying runway heading, uh, we're told to proceed direct to the Oceanside VOR. So at this point, um, I've got to do three things before uh, any approach that I do. The first thing I do, and I teach the ABCs. So the first is A, I need to get the ATIS or get the weather. Why do I get the weather first? Well, I need to figure out what the winds are doing to figure out what runway I'm gonna end up landing. And then uh, also to hear what approach the ATIS is advertising if it's a towered airport. So I get the weather, I now figure out what uh, approach I'm gonna fly. So then at that point I do my B's, um, build it, bug it, brief it. So I build it inside of the GPS. I go ahead and build that approach. I select the approach, I build the IAF that I'm gonna fly from. Why do I do this next? Well, at any point my approach controller may tell me to proceed direct to some waypoint. I want as much of that in my flight plan at my disposal as possible. Once I built it, I'll bug anything that I can, any nav frequencies, comm frequencies, altitudes, etc. cetera. Um, if I don't know what I'm actually bugging, then it's time to the third B is brief it. So at this point, I'm gonna open up the plate and I'll briefly brief it. Um, so this is the VOR Alpha in the ocean side. It's valid through the 25th of February, so it's good. The ocean side VOR is 115.3. If I don't have that bugged, I'll do it now on my nav. The final approach course is 096. The airport elevation is 28 feet. Review the notes, come down to ASOS. I already got that. Uh, the approach control, if I'm not already talking to this person, I'll bug that as a standby frequency. That's probably the next person I'm gonna talk to. If I'm already talking to that frequency, now would be a good time to put the tower or the CTAF frequency in, because that'll be my next frequency. Great, I've got the frequencies loaded. Now I come down and I brief the uh, final approach fix is Oceanside, cross Oceanside at or above 2,500 feet. Uh, the missed approach is, uh, the missed approach point is 3.4 uh, DME miles from Oceanside. Uh, the MDA is 1140 at one and one quarter mile visibility. We'll call it 1200 feet. Uh, that's 1,112 feet AGL. If we don't see the runway at that point at the MAP, we'll execute a missed approach. What is that? It's climbing left turn to 4,000 feet via a heading of 030, intercept the Oceanside radial 083, hold at Vista. It is a timed approach at 90 knots. It's two minutes and 16 seconds from the final approach fix to the missed approach. So that's the brief. Now I'm gonna break up my checklist and I'm gonna do the checklist. So we got the ATIS, we're in route before approach. We got the ATIS, we loaded the GPS, we've briefed the approach plate. We've reviewed any NOTAMs in foreflight. If we've got those, we've got the nav frequencies tuned. At this point, I could identify them, listen to nav one, make sure that the, um, that the Morse code matches, listen to nav two, make sure the Morse code matches. Approach course, make sure that's bugged. Make sure that I understand the approach lights, if there are approach lights on this, um, on this approach there or not. Comm frequencies, make sure that those in, make sure I understand that the final approach fix is a crossing restriction at or above 2,500 feet. The glide slope, I like to brief the glide slope. There isn't a glide slope on this um, approach because it is a non-precision uh, VOR approach, but for uh, an approach like the next one that we'll see that has a glide slope, I wanna know at that glide slope, at a given airspeed, how many feet per minute do I need to maintain that glide slope? what the minimums are, what the missed approach is. And then I like to finish all of this by summarizing to myself the three most important items. How low do I go? What's the MDA, what's the DA? For this one, it's 1140. How long do I go? 3.4 miles DME or at 90 knots, two minutes and 16 seconds, or the missed approach point on my GPS. And then which way do I go? I know that at the missed approach, if I don't see the runway, I'm gonna cram everything in, I'm gonna climb. And am I gonna climb runway heading? Am I gonna climb left? Am I gonna climb right? Once I execute the missed, I can rebrief the rest of the stuff, but that's the important stuff to keep in my memory. I'm not gonna remember the rest of this. So at this point, I'm flying along. I'm gonna cross the Oceanside uh, VOR. At this point, I'm uh, up here in the checklist. I'm at the holds, turns, and fixes. I'm at the fix. I cross the fix. I'm gonna do the five T's. I'm gonna turn left to a heading of 270. I'm gonna twist my heading bug to 270. I'm gonna twist the OBS. 
to 270. I'm gonna start a timer when my wings go level or I'm a beam the station. I'm gonna fly outbound so there's no throttle to set. There's nothing to talk about. Um, once my timer says one minute, I'm going to turn the airplane to 045 to re-intercept the 270 radial or 090 inbound. I'm gonna twist my heading bug to 045. I'm gonna twist my OBS to 09 or zero. I don't really need to set a timer for the intercept. Um, the throttle at this point, I might think about if I'm cleared for the approach, it's time to do my before FAF checklist. What is that? It's basically a gumps check plus setting a final approach speed and trimming out for that speed. So gumps, make sure my gas is on the best tank or on both. Make sure my undercarriage is down. Make sure my mixture is set to the best power. Making sure my prop is set to what I want, full forward. Uh, make sure my flaps are set to my, um, to my approach flap setting. Make sure my straps are on, my seatbelts, and then all switches are on. Fuel pump, lights all on, maybe carb heat, etc. And then again, I'm reminding myself that I want to be trimmed hands-free for my final approach speed in the Cessna 172, 90 knots. Great, so that's the throttle, essentially, of the five T's. At this point, I'm cleared for the approach. I cross the Oceanside VOR. Again, I execute the five T's. I turn to a heading of 096. I twist the heading bug 096, twist the OBS 096. I start a timer. In addition, every time I cross an FAF, any FAF, I execute on what's called the CANT checklist. So I make sure my CDI mode is set to the mode that I want. So in this case, it would be VLOC. Make sure my approach mode is what I want. So in other words, make sure the GPS has sequenced into approach mode, or if I was flying a GPS approach, make sure it's enunciating the type of GPS approach that I'm flying, LPV, LNAV, et cetera. The N stands for no flags, making sure that I don't have a glide slope flagged if I'm flying a precision approach or you know the lateral navigation flagged or any type of flag on my CDI. And then again, the T is to start a timer, so can't. At this point, I'm descending inbound toward my missed approach point, toward the airport. At 1,000 feet to minimums, I ask myself, is my scum done? So that's stabilized. Am I stabilized? Am I cleared to land or am I cleared for the mist in the event of a practice approach? Again, I'm asking myself, is my undercarriage down and am I ready for the mist? What was the mist again? Is it left turn, right turn, etc.? So that's scum, 1,000 feet to minimums. So I'm flying down, I'm following my needles. I get to my MAP, so either again my GPS MAP or 3.4 miles DME, or maybe I don't have any of that and it's two minutes and 16 seconds. At this point, I'm cramming in the throttle, cramming in carb heat, I'm climbing, I'm pitching to a climb attitude. I'm validating that I've got a climb airspeed. I'm validating my altimeter is indicating a positive climb. My VSI is positive. I'm trimming to a climb attitude. So it's the five T's. I have crammed, I'm climbing. I clean the third C. I remove my flaps when I verify positive rate. I'm turning to the heading that I need to turn to. I cool if I've got cow flaps at this point, uh, I might open them. And then at that point, only once I've done the four other C's and I'm kind of in a, a stable environment at this point, I communicate. Oceanside traffic going mist, go back to SoCal approach and check in, hey, I'm on the mist. Great. So now I'm issued vectors, um, and at this point, I've gone missed. I didn't see the airport uh, at Oceanside, and I need to set up for maybe lower minimums at a different airport. Let's do the ILS 28 right at Montgomery. So again, the three uh, things we need before every approach, A, uh, before every approach, A, B, C, I got to get the weather at Montgomery. So I tune it up in my secondary uh, comm. I listen to the weather, I determine what are the winds, I determine where's the ceiling at, can I fly this approach, what approach are they advertising? At that point I do the bees, build it, bug it, brief it. I build it in my GPS, I bug anything I can, comms, navs, headings, altitudes, etc. And then I brief it, let's do that real quick. This is how I do it in, in, in real life now. 
This is the ILS 28 right at Montgomery, valid through the 25th of February. The localizer frequency is 111.95. Approach course is 281. We've got 3,400 feet of landing distance. Airport elevation is 427. Expect to see Malzer lights when we break out. We already got the ATIS. We're on with the final SoCal approach controller, so I'm going to tune up 1192 as tower. Come down, the final approach fix is Penny. We need to cross Penny at or above 2,500 feet. The DA is 673, we'll call it 700 feet at three quarter mile visibility, that's 250 feet AGL. In the event we don't see the runway at that point, we need to climb runway heading 1100 feet, left turn heading 270 to 3000 feet, intercept Mission Bay radial 327, 326 rather, and then hold at Cariff. How low do I go? 673. How long do I go? Wherever the glide slope intercepts, 673. And which way do I go? It's climb runway heading. Not a timed approach in unless it results in a localizer. And the glide slope is three degrees, which at 90 knots is roughly 500 feet a minute. So that's what I want to see on my VSI as I'm holding the glide slope. I've briefed it. Anything that I read that I didn't already bug at this point, I would bug that. I've now done the Bs. I'm going to back it up with a checklist. I got the weather, loaded the GPS, I briefed the approach plate, I reviewed NOTAMs, um, nav frequencies, approach course, approach lights. Um, at this point, I would listen to the Morse code for the ILS, make sure that I am indeed flying the ILS and it's working. Com frequencies, final approach fix, glide slope, minimums, and missed approach. Great, that's all set. So in this approach, I'm going to imagine that I'm getting vectored onto final rather than hitting the IAF. So at some point, I'm going to probably be on a downwind leg. I'm going to expect a turn to the base leg. Once I get turned to the base leg, I'm going to anticipate where they're going to dump me and I'm going to activate that leg in the GPS. At some point, they're going to turn me on to final. They're going to give me what I call the dreaded final approach instructions. So they're going to tell me, Skyhawk 3386 Echo is five miles from Penny. Turn right heading 250, maintain 3,800 feet until established. Cleared for the ILS 28 right approach at Montgomery or something like that. They're gonna always tell me where I am, a heading to turn, an altitude to hold, and then I'm cleared for the approach. So I read that back, I turn to that heading. I'm now intercepting the leg that I had chosen. Two miles before the FAF, I'm going to do my two miles before FAF checklist. So I'm going to do a gumps check, gas on the best tank, undercarriage down, mixture to best power, prop set where I want it, flap set to approach. So I'm going to take 10 degrees in a Skyhawk, straps on, seatbelts on, switches, uh, fuel pumps, lights, carb heat on, and then I'm trimmed hands free at my final approach speed. So great, now I am fully configured. I intercept the localizer for lateral guidance. I intercept the glide slope for uh, vertical guidance. And then once I get to the final approach fix, again, it's that can't checklist. CDI mode, making sure I'm in VLOC since I'm using a ground-based uh, station. But if I was um, using GPS, I'd wanna make sure I'm in GPS CDI mode. Approach mode, making sure that I'm in VNAV uh, for a GPS again. If, if I was flying the, um, the RNAV approach in Montgomery and I was using LPV minimums, I'd make sure that my approach mode is, is indicating, is enunciating LPV. Uh, making sure I have no flags, so I don't have a glide slope flag, don't have a localizer flag, and then the T is timer. I'm going to start a timer, even though it's not a timed approach. It's good practice. That's my can't checklist. I'm now at the FAF. I validate that my glide slope intercept is at the FAF, 2,500 feet at Penny. I'm proceeding down the approach. At 1,000 feet to minimums, I do my scum checklist, ask myself, am I stabilized? Am I cleared to land? And if not, go get that landing clearance. Is my undercarriage down? Am I ready for the mist? Again, the mist is a climb runway heading. So now I'm flying 1,000 feet to minimums. I like to announce 500 feet to minimums, 200 feet to minimums, minimums. In this example, let's imagine we're not going mist. If we were, we would execute the five Cs, but we're not. At this point, we visually acquire the runway. We've got the runway environment in sight. Uh, we're on the ILS, we continue flying the glide slope, and we go in and land. That is chair flying two approaches.